welcome to your life point. I hope you guys are doing very well. And uh, we're so excited about what's going on with the art of neighboring. As I've had a chance to be with many of y'all in the different, in the different life points and better together groups, it's nothing short of amazing. The stories that you're telling me every week about what God's already doing through you in your neighborhoods. And I want to encourage you, keep it up. You guys rock. Keep it going. Awesome stuff, right? So, okay, we're in week four. It's about to get real, y'all. We uh, talked about the fear factor this morning at church. Okay, here's the thing. Last week, we talked about time barrier. This week, the fear factor. It's a little different. We're all busy and all that. I get that. But we all also have fears. Sometimes our fears are irrational. Sometimes they're justified. But uh, often when it comes to people and the fears that we place when we look at people, It all has to do with the unknown. What if? What if my neighbor's weird? What if they're a chainsaw murderer? What if, what if, what if? You see, fear is a barrier that can keep us from living up to our full potential, to living up to what God has called us to do. You see, we've been talking about how In order to love our neighbors, we've got to know them. Fear is a barrier to that very first step of knowing them. Because once we know somebody, the unknown vanishes. And when the unknown's gone, fear's gone. It's a barrier to keep us from getting to know our neighbors. We looked at the story of uh, the Israelites when they sent out 12 spies into the promised land. They came back. Two of them were like, all right, we got this. Let's do this. But the other 10 got gripped by fear. So much fear that it changed their perspective. Rather than trusting in God, who had shown himself all-powerful and almighty, they got gripped by fear, and it changed their perspective. And as a result of it, the whole nation couldn't enter the promised land because of their fear. And come to find out later, the people that they had to drive out of the land, were scared to death of them. They had nothing to be scared of. What a shame that an entire generation missed out on the promise of God because they let fear rule their lives. What a shame. Here's the thing, guys. We have an opportunity to get to know our neighbors, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Don't let fear grip you to where you can't do that. In 1 Timothy, Paul tells us God's spirit does not give us a spirit of timidity. It does not make us timid, but it gives us power. It gives us self-discipline. And when we take up and remember that God's Spirit lives in us, that gives us great confidence because His Spirit lives within us. It's His Spirit we depend on, not our own abilities. And we don't submit ourselves to our fear. We submit ourselves to the Spirit of God. So this week, I want to challenge you guys. If you haven't started, started the process of getting to know your neighbor, do that. But you've got to take the first step. Don't wait for them to come to you. You take the first step. And when you take that first step, the fear will melt away. But it takes you being willing to take that first step. If you're really struggling with this, let me encourage you. Go get the na- your mail the same time your neighbor is getting it. So you have a chance to just see them right there. It's not knocking on the door. It's neutral. Start hanging out on the front porch, playing on the front lawn with your kids. Make an opportunity for your paths to cross so you have an easier time getting to meet them and in- introduce yourself to them. But whatever that looks like for you, take that first step. The fear is going to melt away. Remember, to defeat fear of your neighbor, you've got to know your neighbor. Guys, thank you for joining us for Life Points. Now I want you guys to pause it for a second. I'm going to be right back, and then we're going to look at your block party. All right, guys, hope you just had a great time discussing those questions. Again, I'm excited about what God's doing in your life. Now let's talk block party for a minute. We're coming up in just under a month now. We're having our neighborhood block parties. It's going to be a lot of fun. So each week, you guys have been looking at a different aspect. This week on your plan, you you guys need to spend about 10 to 15 minutes delegating the different responsibilities for the night of. 
last week you should have delegated who's going to get food or where you're going to get the food and all the different supplies and the things that you need to make it happen. This week you need to look at the night of and divvy up responsibilities for what needs to happen. Okay, not the supplies. You should already have that done. If you didn't do that last week, take a moment and do that as well. Uh, but So who's going to DJ? Who's going to watch the kids in the bounce houses? Who's going to be the grill master? Who's going to work the crowds and just meet people? So look at all those aspects. You guys got a great plan. Um, Jim's done a wonderful job putting this together. So go through that plan and start to delegate that out. Also, you guys want to talk about how the party looks as part of this? You guys should have a good, by now, know where it's going to be and know your neighborhood and all of that. So have a good time discussing your party, planning for your party. It's going to be a great time. Guys, have an awesome week. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.